you've been using them, a couple blocks and a strap or something to hold on to for extending your reach. Just have those nearby. And if you would like to start seated, that's how I'm going to begin. You can join me and maybe put a folded blanket underneath your pelvis. Um, if you're sitting on a chair and you don't need to lift your hips up, just come closer to the edge of the seat so that your spine uh, lifts up straight and you don't tend to slouch into the backrest. All right, and before you close your eyes and get comfortable, just make sure that both of your pelvic halves feel balanced. So if you tend to favor one hip, see if you can bring a little more weight to the other side. And then also notice that front to back as well through your pelvis. Do you tend to let it tip back or forward? Can you find neutral? Even bringing your hands to these little bony protuberances around the top of your pelvis, just feel that it's even front to back and side to side. And that's a way you can manually adjust. And then once that's comfortable, relax your arms, palms up or down. Close your eyes and bring your attention inward. And first, just sensing your body. What it's like to occupy your body from the boundary of your skin all the way into the muscles, the veins, all the fluids and tissues, bone, hollow space, everything within. Sense your head balanced over your shoulders, your shoulders over your ribs, your ribs over your hips. And notice if any sensations arise, any loud sensations. Sometimes this is an ache or a soreness maybe a bit of pain, especially in the morning, those sensations tend to be louder. And sometimes there are good sensations, warmth, coolness, a feeling of weight so you're grounded, a feeling of lightness so you feel spacious and open. maybe tingling, maybe a sense of vibration, even the beating of your heart pulse. You might even get so sensitive to that that you notice the rhythmic kind of music within you. Or you might not notice much and that's okay too. Bring your attention to your breathing, and if possible, breathe in and out through your nose. Notice the pace of your breath, how long it takes to inhale and exhale. Notice if there is a pause at the top of your inhale or the bottom of your exhale. Notice the fluidity of your breath. Does it kind of pour from your inhale right into your exhale? Does it linger? Does it feel smooth as you breathe in? Does it feel rough or agitated as you breathe out? And then notice the parts of you that move in response to your breath your belly, your sides, your lower back, even up around your armpits, your chest, upper, uh, I already said upper back, but just any portion of the back of the body, back of the lungs. Maybe even down to your pelvic floor or up to your soft palate. And then now that you've taken stock of your experience, Notice the quality of your mind. Maybe 
your day is a little less busy just by using your awareness to notice how you're feeling, how you're living right now. And join your hands together in front of your chest, taking a moment of gratitude for this practice to help slow down, become aware, and just be with all that you are. Take a deep breath in, and this time as you exhale, let it out your mouth. Start to rub your hands together, create some heat or warmth. And then once your palms feel warm enough, cover your eyes, sharing some of that warmth with your face, soothing the eyes. Blink your eyes open, and then take the hands back down. So if you need to, you can shift in your seat and just readjust your posture or wiggle around if you felt the need to move. And we'll do some deliberate movements now as well. So take a breath in, and with your exhale, just bring your chin towards your sternum, towards your chest, and sense any degree of stretch, opening length through the back of your neck, even down in between the shoulders. And then wait for your breath in, lift your chin back to center or maybe even up towards the ceiling. You can open your mouth, allow the jaw to unhinge, your tongue to hang, and just feel that stretch across the front of your chest, even down towards your navel. Wait for your exhale, drop your chin, and just let the head hang. And do that a couple more times. So really slow motion, yes. Relax your shoulders as you do this. Relax your arms, your hands. One more time, lifting your head up. You can look up if that feels comfortable. And then exhale, bring your head back to neutral. This time, slow motion, no. Take your head over towards one shoulder. Maybe even gaze out of the corner of your eye, possibly back behind you, see what you see. And then very slowly rotate your head the other direction, which may go a little further or stop with less range of motion. Look out of the corner of your eye. And then again, a couple more times. Now, for most of us, the shoulders and the chest want to go with the head. So the task becomes letting the neck and the head move independent of the rest of the torso. Once more. And then come back to center. Now tilt your head, draw one ear towards one shoulder and feel an opening through the side seam of your neck, even behind the ear, all the way down the top of the shoulder. And you can let that arm come closer towards the ground or hover if you're in a chair. And that might intensify the stretch a little bit. Come back up when you're ready and go to the other side. So you just let the head lean as far as is comfortable. Maybe the hand comes to rest on the floor or dangle beside you. You can even open your mouth a little bit here. Come back up a couple more times each side. You can even tie stretching the arm further away from you to hover. And that will crank up the volume as well. If you want it, <laughs> option. Go to the other side. And once more each direction. To move slowly with the neck, it's delicate. We have these fragile cervical bones we want to protect. So just make sure you're not giving yourself whiplash as you do this. And then come back up. Let your head just return to normal position or a reset position and start to roll your shoulders around. 
So you can go forward, up and back a few times and feel into any stickiness, any openness or extreme mobility through the shoulders. Go the other way. It's also encouraging a little more mobility in your chest and upper back. And then let the shoulders come down, take a breath in and shrug them up to your ears. Make a fist with your hands, tense the muscles in your arms and exhale, just let them hang. Relax your grip and do that twice more. Inhale, shrug your shoulders, clench fists, tighten the muscles in your arms, let them release. And one more time. So any burdens that you tend to carry around your shoulders, you feel yourself holding that weight and then let it go. All right, now take your hands in front of you and just circle them a few times, rolling out your wrists, and then go the other direction. Notice if one way is easier. And then kind of flop your hands back and forth like a lazy wave, and then side to side. And then lastly, make a fist with your hands and spread your fingers out. And this is really nice if you um, do a lot of working with your hands, if you type, if you're holding on to things throughout the day with a tight grip. It's good to stretch out the tissues in your palms, your fingers. All right, then just shake them loose. Okay, now you can either do the next one, some cat and cows from a seated position, or you can come onto all fours, whatever you prefer. And if you're coming onto all fours, you might want a blanket to pad your knees or even your wrists. And then set yourself up with wide hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. You can have your toes tucked or be on the tops of your feet. If you're in a chair, you just find neutral with your spine. And then take a breath in, reach your chest forward, draw your uh, head and your tail back towards each other. It's a different orientation if you're seated. And exhale, round your spine, push into the floor with your hands, tuck your chin, engage your belly muscles to look towards your navel. And then just do that again, inhale, Open up the whole front side of the torso. Exhale, open up the back side. Wait for your breath in. Lift your chest, lift your tail, lift your head. Wait for your breath out. Tuck the tail, tuck the head, round your spine. One more time. Then come back to neutral and begin to shift your hips back towards your heels. You can walk your hands out in front of you and come into a child's pose. So if you're seated, you can drape your torso over your thighs, reach your hands towards the floor and drop your head. Otherwise, your forehead can come down to the floor. If it doesn't get there comfortably, stack your fists or grab a block to rest your forehead on. And then one of the benefits of this pose is you really feel the back of your lungs expand. So bring your attention, like you have a lot of little eyes looking down on you, into the back of your body and watch your lungs puff up, even expanding around your kidneys, broadening through your shoulders. And as you exhale, your back body seems to fall a little bit closer towards the floor. Maybe even your hips sink a micromillimeter closer towards your feet. A couple more breaths here. Relax your pelvic floor, relax lower portion of your belly, just let it all hang. One more breath.
then slowly come up onto all fours and step your right foot forward to move into a lunge. This could be where you grab your blocks and use them to place your hands on, bring the floor a little closer to you. And if you have yoga blocks, you have different heights you can play with. Bring your hands under your shoulders as best you can judge and align your knee over your heel as best you can judge. Also taking care that it follows the center of your foot. So it's not bowing inward towards the big toe. It's not angling out towards the pinky toe too much. It just goes right over the center line. And then you can walk your left knee back. If your knee is sensitive, it can be off the ground. It's just more of an energized posture. And take a few breaths here to let your hips open. Maybe your pelvis drops, your chest lifts, and your spine lengthens. Stamp your front heel down for stability and even try to drag it back towards you and you'll feel the underside of your leg muscles start to kick in for better balance. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue. And with your next exhale, start to shift your hips back, coming into a hamstring stretch, or what's also called Ardha Hanumanasana, or a half split position. Now your hands can go further forward, or they can come closer towards you for a little more stability. See if your toes can come off the ground, spread them, push down into your heel, keep the knee bent, especially if your leg is tight, and just lean your torso forward. If you're doing this with your knee off the ground, it will look something like this. And just sensing how the legs feel this morning, what your kind of baseline elasticity is through those muscles. One more breath. And then drop your knee down if you can and switch sides. So left foot forward, right knee back, or right ball of the foot on the floor, knee up. Align, knee on top of your heel in the same trajectory as kind of your second and your third toes. Hands support you on your blocks if you need it. And then maybe you start to shift your pelvis forward, letting the whole front line of the hips, the thighs, even the belly start to open find more space. Relax your shoulders and stamp your front foot down for better balance. Breathe here and notice the sensations. Sometimes they're enjoyable, sometimes they can cause you to resist. So if it's too intense, you just back off a little bit. One more breath. And when you're ready, wait for your exhale, shift your hips back and come into the hamstring stretch. So hands closer towards you or further out if you want more intensity. Rock onto the heel, spread your toes, keep the knee micro bent, especially because this is our first hamstring stretch. And reach your sternum, your breastbone towards your toes. And if you're doing this with the knee off the ground, it will look something like this. You can also be up higher with your hands on a chair. Take one more breath, noticing the difference perhaps between sides. And then one more time, change sides again. Go back to right foot forward, left knee down or left thigh up, and we'll add a twist. So keep your left hand on your block, bring your right hand to your hip, push your left hand down to start to turn your chest off to the right towards your thigh. You could stay here. If you'd like, you could bring your right hand to park at your shoulder. You could even stretch it up towards the ceiling, opening your palm away from you. Maybe look up if that's safe with your neck. And if you want to challenge yourself, push into your front foot, puff your back thigh up, push through the heel, and come up into a higher lunge. Take one more breath. As 
as you exhale, slowly lower down and change sides. Last time, left foot forward, right knee back, right hand stays on the ground or your block, left hand comes to your hip, push into your right palm to start to spin your chest off to the left, stay here, or bring your left fingertips to your shoulder, or you can even open that arm up, turning your palm to face away from you. Feel this left shoulder blade squeezing in towards the spine to open through the left side of your chest, bringing more of a back bend into your upper back. If you'd like, you can lift your back knee, reach through the heel, stand tall, take one more breath. And this time, bring your hand to the block and simply step forward into Uttanasana, or intense pose, forward bend. So you can align your feet under your hips, bend your knees, and slowly tilt your pelvis forward to lengthen your spine towards the floor. Hands can stay on your blocks. They can come up to your thighs or shins. They can even rest on a chair if that's more comfortable. You tuck your chin and let the back of the neck traction with the weight of gravity. Now if your legs are super stiff, bend them a lot to get really generous and let your belly rest on your thighs. Take one or two more breaths. Push into your feet, inhale, lift yourself up halfway, look forward, straighten your legs any amount, and exhale, bend your knees, fold back into Uttanasana, tuck your chin, press into the feet, this time inhale, come all the way up, nice and easy, you can just relax your arms and find yourself standing, and then move any obstacles out of your way including your blanket if it was there. And then return to Tadasana, or mountain pose. And this time we'll get a little more specific. So look down at your feet, align them so they're parallel and pointing straight forward, and then lift your toes off the ground, spread them wide and replace them back down to the floor so that it feels like you just gained a shoe size but broader, wider. <laughs> okay, and now balance your weight evenly from the fronts and backs and sides of your feet. Add a soft bend in your knees that can help you really push down into the soles of your feet. Bring your attention to your pelvis. Notice if you have a preference to tilt it forward or back. Take hold of the sides of your pelvis and level it as best you can. So for most of us, that means dropping the tail and lifting the front of the pelvis by engaging the abdominal muscles. Notice your ribs, do they jut forward? Do they kind of fold back? Can you bring them so they're more neutral over the hips? Notice your shoulders, same thing. Where are they in space relative to the ribs? Align them on top. Same with the head, ears over the shoulders. So the crown of the head just reaches north. And then relax your arms. Maybe even close your eyes and take three breaths here. Standing tall, occupying your space with your full attention. Now open your eyes if they were closed. Breathe in, reach your arms out and up, stretch to the highest point. And then exhale, lean forward, arms wide, hands come to thighs, shins, floor, or your blocks if you want to grab them. Drop your head. Inhale, come up halfway. Roll your shoulders onto your back, lift your chest, lengthen your spine. And exhale, fold back down, release the back of your neck. Press into your feet, strong legs, lift yourself up, spread your arms, reach, and exhale, relax your arms, re 
returning back to Tadasana. We'll do two more Surya Namaskars. Inhale, lift yourself up. Spread your fingers, even your toes. Exhale, lean forward and bow over your legs. Bend your knees if they're stiff. Inhale, lift yourself up. Look forward and exhale, come back down. Maybe even look between the legs. Press into the feet, steady yourself with some abdominal strength, lift up. Exhale, arms down. One more time on your own with your breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And out. Breathe in to come up. Breathe out to return to stand. All right, now shift your weight into your right foot. And if balance is not your strong suit, you might come to a wall or a chair and stand so one hand can uh, support you with your balance or hold the back of a chair. Now, if you're able to, lift your left foot up, catch hold of your shin or the underneath your thigh and draw that leg closer towards you. So if you're using a wall, you stand with your right side at the wall to support you and use your left hand to lift your leg up. Now this could be your pose, standing here, noticing any fluctuation in your standing foot, trying to level that out, especially the big toe likes to lift off the ground, so seal that down. Drop your tailbone, engage the belly muscles, draw your shoulders back. So you're finding Tadasana, just getting rid of a leg. If you want to challenge yourself, roll your ankle, roll your foot. Does your breath catch? Are you holding it? Bring your attention there. Smooth it out. Go the other way with your circles. Find one point to gaze at, that can be really helpful. And then relax your foot, step back down to two feet, shake out your standing leg for a moment if you need to, and switch sides. So now left foot grounds, you can spread the toes to remind yourself of that solid, broad base. Lift your right leg up, catch the front of the shin or under the thigh. And then aim your tailbone south, engage your belly muscles for support. Maybe stay here and breathe, fixing your eyes on one point a few feet in front of you. Or you can roll your ankle. Go the other way. So you're creating a challenge for yourself, multitasking, while trying to maintain composure and just act natural. Relax your foot and step down. Okay, we'll do that again, just adding on. So back to your right foot, stand on that leg, draw your left leg up, holding here. Now bring your right hand to your hip or keep it on the wall if you're using a wall and start to slowly draw circles with the knee, which is really the thigh bone moving in the hip socket. But you can help direct the knee with your hand. Whoop. This is the challenge. Start to waver. Go the other way. Keep your attitude light and playful, that's also a key with balance. Don't get too serious. And when you're ready, step down, change sides. Shake it out if you need to, and switch. Right leg comes up, and you can always just stay here. This could be enough of a task. If you wanna challenge yourself, start to draw circles with that knee. And go both directions with your circles. So a few rotations one way, 
Do the other. This is asking a lot of that standing leg. Those side glute muscles have to support you. Keep us balanced. Strengthening the ankle. Lots working to help us stay upright. When you're ready, step down, shake it out. <sighs> okay, last little option here for balance. I'll turn to the side so you can see me. Step into your right foot. Now bend your left knee so your foot comes off the ground and you're kind of like a flamingo. You could stay right here, or if you can kick your heel closer towards your bottom, reach back with your hands, maybe catch hold of your foot. Maybe it's a big toe or a pinky. And if you wanted to reach and you can't, you can always use your strap and make a little sling behind you. So your ankle falls into the sling and you can draw your foot closer with the strap. Find one point to gaze at. We're not going to move around here. We're just going to hold. Depending on the flexibility of your hip flexors, your knee might be further forward in space. That's okay. Over time, you try to aim it down towards the floor. Take one more breath. And then release and change sides, with or without your strap, your choice. So step onto your left foot, bend your right knee, maybe it just hovers off the floor, you can stay right here, in which case your hamstrings are getting a good workout. Or you could work your foot into your sling or catch hold of your foot and drop closer towards your bottom. And feel the opening, the length through the front of your thigh, the hip flexors, even up into the belly. Take one more breath. And then step down, release your strap, and spread your legs wide apart for Trikonasana. Turn your right foot out from deep inside your hip socket. Point your toes to the short edge of your mat, and then aim your back foot, your left foot in about 45 degrees or so. Align your front heel with your back arch and then bring your hands to your hips. Take a peek at your knee, make sure it's not wandering inward towards your big toe, but it stays directing over the center of the foot just like in our lunges earlier. Now spread your arms wide, inhale and exhale lean forward like you're in a tug of war and you're being pulled to the right. Lower your hand to your thigh, shin, or a block on the inside or outside of your leg. Could also be a chair seat. Then your left hand comes to your hip, your shoulder, or stretches up. Now push into both feet to start to steer your pelvis so that your right hip rolls under, aiming your tailbone towards the back of your left heel. And you should feel a little more opening across the front of your thigh, even the front of the, of the belly on this top side. Lean your torso back, lean your chest back, take one more breath. And then when you're ready, come up to stand and change sides. Just pivot your feet the other way. So now you're pointing to the other short edge of your mat. Angle your back foot in about 45. Align heel to arch. Take your hands to your hip and just adjust your knee if you need to. That's really key here. Protect your knee joint. Align it right over the center of the foot. And once that's set, reach your arms wide. Breathe in. Exhale. This time you're being pulled in a tug of war. To the other side, lower your hand, bring hand comfortably. Other hand rests at your hip, shoulder, or stretch it up. And this could be different between sides, so don't feel like you have to force yourself to look the same. Push your feet down, especially the ball of your front foot, the outer edge of your back foot. Draw your left hip under, roll your right hip out to feel more of an opening across the front of your pelvis. Lean your chest back. Take one more breath, 
breathe into both sides of your torso. And when you're ready, slowly come up and pivot the other way again. Okay, now this time, bend your knee intentionally so you come into about a 90 degree or so, aligning it right on top of the heel for warrior two or Vita Badrasana B. Still have that heel to arch alignment through both feet. Take your arms out wide and just park them here. So you can imagine your hands are roughly over the uh, corresponding foot, or maybe they're not if your legs or limbs are longer. You can push your palms down isometrically while resisting and feel how that engages the muscles in your arms if you want a little extra um, athleticism for the pose, which is already quite demanding. Take one more breath. And then lower your arms, bring your hands to your hips, change sides, pivot to the other side. Warrior two, finding this bent lunge stance like a warrior, still making sure you can see your big toe. Once that's set, reach the arms out. Now this time, if your shoulders are feeling a little tired, turn your palms up. And that gives you a little more external rotation, broadens across your chest, and relaxes the upper arm muscles. Act natural here, even if it's a challenge. Bring your attention to your breath, smooth it out. One more inhale. And as you exhale, lower your arms, straighten your legs, and heel toe them back in for a moment, and wipe the slate clean. Just take a breath in, reach your arms out to the side, stretch up, and exhale, lower your arms back down, and do that twice more. Inhale, exhale. Letting go of everything that came before and arriving to the here and now. All right, now take your legs wide apart again. This time, your toes will angle in slightly, so you're a little bit pigeon-toed. Bring your hands to your pelvis. Stamp your feet down. Inhale, lift your chest. And exhale, squeeze your elbows back behind you, start to lean forward, and just go until you feel a strong stretch across the back of your thighs. So this could be halfway. You wanna also make sure that we're not rounding the spine. So if your spine is starting to bow, come up higher. Otherwise, you could bring your hands down to a chair seat to your blocks or even to the floor. So the priority here is the spine. We wanna keep it long, make space for all the nerves to thread out through the vertebrae, for the spinal cord to hang and not compress what already seems to get pretty compressed through our daily life. So use this as a way to heal your spine. And then after that, you can start to stretch your legs a little bit more. Maybe come down further, tipping your weight more towards the balls of your feet. You might have to bend the knees to do this. And breathe. And this is also an inversion. So you're getting a rush of blood to your head, which can sometimes make us feel a little dizzy when we come up. So just move slowly in a moment. Keep your breath even. Inhale, come up halfway. Pause here, breathe out. 
Bring your hands to your hips, engage your belly muscles, inhale, come up the rest of the way. And if you feel any lightheadedness, tuck your chin, look down and just pause until you feel normal again. All right, when you're ready, we'll do one more variation of this pose. And you can use a strap if you like. So the two options I'll give is to either hold your elbows behind you, so your arms are bent like this, or you can hold a strap behind you. Now if you're super flexible, you could even clasp your hands. That's a third option, up to you. I'm gonna use the strap, and this just gives you a shoulder opener as well. So feet go back as they were, about a leg's distance, slightly pigeon-toed. Hold the strap, hold your elbows or hold your hands behind you. Inhale, lift your chest. And exhale, begin to come forward. You may get to halfway, you may not even get there because the shoulders start to receive the stretch and it kind of uh, requires you to back off a little bit from your fold. But if you have more flexibility, you can start to lean forward, in which case the arms Drift away from the back of your body and lift up towards the ceiling. Keep the tension on the strap so you're actively pulling the strap apart. And you'll feel how that tones the muscles through the backs of your arms, your triceps, even the shoulders. Rock your weight forward towards the balls of your feet, especially if your heels are feeling heavy. Take one more breath, and then push into the feet, slowly come up, nice and easy, tuck your chin, let go of the strap if you were using it, just toss it aside. When you're ready, heel toe your feet back in, lift your head, and one more time, just flush that out, breathe in, reach up, breathe out, let your arms settle beside you. All right, now make your way to the floor. So the blocks can come out of the way. And I'm going to turn to my side, just so you can see a little better. We'll practice Navasana, or boat pose. And this is a great core strengthener, or core stabilizer. So bring your hands behind you for support. Elbows can be bent. Lean yourself back so you start to create this V shape with your upper body and your thighs. And you might just stay right here. This could be enough. Use the arms as much as you need to to prevent your back from sagging so your chest stays lifted. If you have the core strength, lift one foot off the ground and support yourself here. Take a breath. Pull your belly muscles back towards your spine and switch. Other leg comes to hover. You can even point your toes to direct the energy even more. And switch. Maybe you go back and forth, just alternate legs. Oh, I feel this for sure. You might shake a little bit, that's okay. Your body's learning. If you have the strength and want to try, you could attempt to hover both feet. Maybe a few inches, maybe the calves become parallel to the floor, and now I am definitely shaking. <laughs> Lower the feet down, push yourself up, open the legs so the soles of the feet come together, and just reach your chest forward, stretch that out. Hands still behind you, and let's do that once more. Navasana again. You could also come down onto your forearms if that's more comfortable. I find this to be a little bit easier, actually. So same thing, you could hover one leg if you like, and alternate, and just go as many times as you desire. You can keep this up for quite some time if you really want to work on toning around your abdomen. You could also try both feet. Hug your belly muscles in right below the navel. That's the reason you're, or the region you want to focus on. And when you're tired of shaking, you come up. 
push yourself forward. You can open the legs if you like, stretch your chest forward to relieve some of that compression and tightness. And let it go. Now sit tall, stretch your legs out in front of you. If you need a blanket, you can prop your hips on top of a folded blanket. And we'll take a twist here. Draw your right foot in, step it over your left thigh, above the knee if you can get it there. You can hug that leg close towards you, prop your spine up. Bring your right hand behind you now for extra support, like a stilt. Inhale, take your left arm up. Find length and exhale, turn your upper body to the right. Catch hold of your thigh, either hugging it in or clipping your elbow to the outside of your knee if you're able to wedge it between your torso and thigh. And either option is fine. You're just using your arm as a prop. Maybe you look out of the corner of your eye and turn your head. So you're twisting in all these little nooks and crannies. a great way to decompress the spine, especially if you're feeling achiness around the back. Take one more breath and then unwind and change sides. The legs out in front of you, bend your left knee, step it over your right thigh, draw it in so you use it as a prop to lift your spine up. Now bring your left hand behind you like a stilt. Inhale, take the right arm up. And exhale, turn to the left, hug the knee or wedge it with the elbow. Maybe look over your left shoulder, even out of the corner of your left eye. You'll probably find your breath becomes shallow as you twist. That is very normal. So there's no need to panic. Take one more breath here. And then unwind, uncross your legs, scooch forward off your blanket if you were using it and make your way onto your back. And you won't need any more props unless you like them for Shavasana in just a few minutes. And set your feet close to your hips once you're all the way down on the floor. Arms beside you, palms flat. You might be able to graze the back of your heels with your fingers. And then press into your feet, wait for an inhale, tuck your tail under so it hooks up towards the ceiling, and then lift your hips maybe a couple inches, maybe a few inches, maybe your lower back, your middle back start to come off the ground, in which case press into the backs of your arms. Keep space underneath your neck, don't let it flatten out. And exhale, slowly curl down through your spine, one vertebrae at a time. We'll do that twice more. So wait for a breath in, press into your feet, especially the heels, tuck your tail under, lift your hips, lift your spine, one vertebrae at a time. You can push into the backs of the arms for a little extra um. And then exhale, slowly come back down. Once more, and we'll stay for a few breaths if you like. Inhale, come up. Now try to pull your feet towards you without actually moving them. Feel how that engages your hamstrings. Maybe you can wiggle your shoulders a little closer underneath you. Take one more breath. Don't turn your head here, just look up at the ceiling. 
and then slowly come back down, draw the shoulders wide apart, lower through the spine, lower the hips, and rest. Breathe in, breathe out. Draw your right knee in close to you. Give that a good squeeze. And maybe take your left leg out long if that doesn't pull too intensely across the front of your hip. Relax your jaw, relax your face. And allow the weight of your right leg to rest and compress the right side of your belly. Cross your knee over your body for a twist. So you take your right knee over to the left. You can reach your right arm out in line with your shoulder, palm up, and maybe even turn your head a quarter turn off to the right. Let the weight of your shoulder hang down towards the floor so that you can feel a long stretch from that right armpit all the way through the outer right hip. Take one more breath. And slowly roll onto your back again. Give your leg one more hug. And then step that foot down. Bring your left knee in. Give it a squeeze. And then you have the option to straighten your right leg if that's appropriate. If that pulls on your lower back too much, keep that knee bent, foot flat to the floor. One more breath, letting the weight of your leg compress the left side of your belly. And when you're ready, start to turn your hips, cross your knee over to the right, reach your left arm out long in line with your shoulder, maybe turn your head a quarter turn off to the left. So my left foot is resting on my inner right leg. You could also cross it over to the floor or have it rest on the inside of the leg on the floor. It's your choice. Long line of opening from your left armpit to the outer left hip. And just let your body absorb the benefits of the pose, all you have to do to receive it is breathe. One more breath. And then slowly roll onto your back. Hug your left knee in one more time, and then send that leg long to the floor for Shavasana, or corpse pose. And spread yourself out here as much as you can. So you can pick up your right shoulder, broaden it out, replace the arm. Pick up your left shoulder, broaden it out to the side, and then relax your arms away from the torso, palms up. If there's any nagging from your lower back or your knees, place a rolled blanket underneath the knees so you have a little more height. Close your eyes when you're comfortable. And 
and start to shift your attention inward. Gazing upon yourself as if from a bird's eye view. Relax your face, smoothing the skin across your forehead, your cheeks, your jaw. Let your tongue come to rest the floor of your mouth behind your bottom teeth. And feel your eyes receding deeper into their sockets. Relax your neck, your throat, all the way down to the center of your chest. And then feel your breath moving wide across the chest into the shoulders, relaxing the arms, relaxing the hands. Rest your upper back, your middle back, your lower back. Allow your belly to respond as you breathe, ebbing and flowing up and down. Relax your hips, your thighs, all the way down your knees, shins into the feet. Let the toes flop out to the side. And drain any last bit of effort out through the soles of your feet. As you rest here and restore your energy, let your attention sink deeper and deeper within. As if right into the center of your mind. From your mind, let your attention sink even deeper down into the center of your heart. When you're ready, draw your attention to the edges of your body, your toes, your fingers, and start to flutter them, just rousing yourself little by little. You can even turn your head from side to side and massage out the back of your skull. Deepen your breath as you do this. And then one at a time, bring your knees closer towards you, feet flat to the floor, and gently roll to one side, coming into a fetal position. 
And you can use your arm as a pillow if you like. When you're ready, press into your hand. Slowly come up, let your head be the very last. And then find a comfortable seat on a chair or on a cushion or whatever you're sitting on. Close your eyes, draw your hands together in front of your heart. Notice how you feel. If you can remember back to the beginning of class, maybe how you feel is different or transformed in some way. Take a deep breath in and let it out your mouth. Rub your hands together, warm yourself up, and then place your warm hands over your eyes. Blink your eyes open and draw your hands back down. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me.